Hey guys, it's Mitch. How's it going? We're back for another spooky season special with Immortal Hulk. So if you're not familiar with this title, you might be wondering, why would a Hulk comic be in with scary comics? Well, actually, this is kind of a horror comic. The twist on this particular run uh, seems to have been a whole lot of body horror, which I'm okay with. This is written by Al Ewing and drawn by Joe Bennett, and this is a new spin on The Incredible Hulk, as far as I know, anyway. So in this one, the conceit is that the Hulk, I mean, he's immortal, but he's not invulnerable. The Hulk can die in this, and does, often, it's just that he always revives. And in the meantime, he gets extremely fucked up. So, for instance, starting out, our introduction is with this guy here. He's We're eventually introduced to him as just a regular guy who's down on his luck and has gotten in with the wrong people. And he's got to stick up this gas station just to, like, you know, help to pay off his debts. And he accidentally kills a little girl, which gets a guy involved uh, who's about to get mad. But he gets his brains blown out before he can do anything. And that's kind of the end of that. He goes back to the hideout, essentially, of the gang that he's gotten in with. And they say, yeah, that sucks that you killed that little girl and that dude. So, um, anyway, this works enough for today's. You better go out and knock over another gas station so that you can pay off tomorrow's. So you get the feeling this guy, Tommy, he's just going to keep getting stuck in this situation over and over. You know, he needed help with money. He got in with loan sharks. And now his life is just going to be fucking hell. And that's when the Hulk comes knocking. And in this case, this is... The Devil Hulk, which is a different variation than what I'm familiar with. Um, they've really played up the multiple personality aspect of the Hulk now, which I believe is an element that Peter David brought into it, if I recall correctly. Could be wrong on that. Feel free to correct me. And we get a lot of different variations of the Hulk in this series. I, th I think we might hit all of them, actually. Um, the main ones that show up are, you know, the Dumb Hulk, Hulk Smash, all that kind of stuff. We do see Mr. Fix-It, and we see another variation called the Devil Hulk, which I'm not familiar with, but... That's him there. Looks like the dumb Hulk, but talks a lot smarter and is a lot more intimidating. And the deal with the devil Hulk is that, I believe you can smell fear, but he can also smell a liar. And in this case, he's working off Bruce's indignation, because Bruce was the guy who got wiped out in the gas station, and he has no problems with crippling this guy for life. So this particular version of the Hulk is uh, pretty amoral. We do see him sometimes, but he's not always the one in charge. Like I said, the other Hulks do show up. We do get some pretty heavy-duty, like, mutilation going on. Whenever the Hulk has to transform, it looks extremely painful. And it's, yeah, it's the kind of thing you would need a whole lot of CG for. Hulk is often maimed where, like, the skin is flayed off his bones. There's a couple of times where he loses his face entirely and keeps fighting. There's one particularly memorable scene in, I think it's the second book, where Bruce Banner is killed, as usual and then vivisected, and all of his parts separated. And then, as night falls, because this version of Bruce turns into the Hulk at night, his organs and parts of his body all begin to swell and turn green, separately. And he does eventually kind of recomport himself. And there's a lot of good set-piece stuff in this. Where, you know, you, you look back on this series and go, yeah, remember that part? Yeah, that part's fucking nuts. The art's very good. Uh, it's, he's one of those guys who doesn't have any real kind of problem drawing, you know, everything. Including some particularly nasty shit sometimes. The writing's quite good. Um, as the series goes on, it does tend to get a little up its own ass with the psychoanalysis stuff. And the end of the series, I'm not happy with. I've read some opinions online that kind of agree with me on that. But, you know, whatever. That's pretty far down. I'm pretty sure the series goes for like 60 issues. So, in the meantime, there is a lot of good stuff. I'm, I'm of the mindset that when you get good stuff, be happy you got the good stuff. Not that the whole thing wasn't as good as the good parts. And the first, like, eight, nine, ten collections of this are quite good. And I have no problem recommending them. So, really, I have no problem recommending the entire series. Like I said, it's interesting to see a horror version of a Hulk comic. And I think it works really well. So, yeah, I mean, I'd recommend The Incredible Hulk. It's a fun take with some crazy visuals. I think it kind of revivified interest in the character a little after... I don't... What was the one before that? Was it the Young Hip Hulk? I don't remember now. I don't think I would have ever read that one. This one, yeah, I can I can recommend. Anyway, that'll do it for this one. I'll have another one for you on Wednesday, I believe. And I'll see you guys then. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.